I was really excited about this camping trip for weeks. My friends and I decided to go to a remote spot in the mountains. It was supposed to be a relaxing weekend away from the city, just us and nature. We set up camp near a small, calm lake surrounded by thick woods. The first night was great, clear skies, a crackling campfire, and laughter echoing through the trees. On the second day, things started to feel weird. We heard strange noises coming from the woods around dusk, rustling leaves, snapping twigs, but nothing scary enough to ruin our evening. As it got darker, the noises got louder. We thought it was just local wildlife. Later that night, I woke up with a creepy feeling of being watched. I heard footsteps around our campsite, soft but deliberate. I peeked out of my tent but saw nothing. My heart raced as I quietly woke my friends. We listened in silence, trying to figure out where the sounds were coming from. Suddenly, a twig snapped loudly nearby, making us jump. We grabbed our flashlights and searched the darkness, but there was no one there. Anxiety gripped us as we realized something was wrong. We decided to pack up quickly and leave, abandoning our tents and stuff in a rush. As we hurried away from the campsite, I realized with horror that the footsteps were following us. Every few moments, we heard them getting closer. Panic set in as we hurried along the dark forest path back to our car. Finally, we reached the edge of the forest and burst into the clearing where our car was parked. We jumped in, slammed the doors shut, and sped off onto the gravel road. Only then did we breathe a sigh of relief. We drove for miles without stopping until we reached the nearest town. Back in town, we tried to make sense of what happened. The isolated location, the strange noises, the feeling of being watched, it all pointed to someone or something out there in the woods with us that night. We reported it to the authorities, but they didn't find anything. To this day, I can't forget those footsteps echoing through the darkness. We never found out who, or what, was following us in the woods that night, but one thing's for sure, I'll never go camping in those mountains again. I never thought my weekend camping trip would turn into a nightmare. It started as a regular adventure, just me, my tent, and the peaceful quiet of the forest. The sun was setting, casting long shadows through the trees. I set up my tent near a small clearing, feeling the excitement of being alone in nature. As night fell, the forest came alive with strange sounds. Twigs snapped underfoot, and the leaves rustled in the silence. I ignored the unease, thinking it was just nerves. But as the night got darker, the air felt heavier. A chill crept in, despite the warmth of my campfire. That's when I heard it, a faint whisper, like a breeze through the branches. I stopped, trying to listen. The words were unclear, whispers carried by the wind. My heart raced as I looked around in the darkness, trying to find where it came from. Was there someone else out there? Fear made my skin crawl as the whispers grew louder, more urgent. They seemed to surround me, coming from every direction. I held onto my flashlight tightly, ready to defend myself against whatever lurked in the shadows. Sweat trickled down my back despite the cool night air. Hours passed in tense silence, interrupted only by the eerie whispers. I didn't dare sleep, afraid of what might happen if I closed my eyes. Dawn broke slowly the first rays of sunlight filtering through the trees above. Relief washed over me as the whispers faded with the morning light. I quickly packed up my campsite, eager to leave the haunting memories behind. As I walked back towards civilization, I couldn't shake the feeling of being watched, of unseen eyes tracking my every move. The forest seemed to hold its breath, waiting. When I finally emerged from the woods, I breathed a sigh of relief. The whispers had stopped replaced by the usual sounds of birds chirping in distant traffic. I glanced back at the forest one last time, half expecting to see a figure among the trees. My camping trip had ended, but the memory of those whispers lingered. I couldn't explain what had happened that night, but one thing was certain. I would never forget the eerie sensation of being alone in the woods, surrounded by unseen voices that whispered secrets of the night.
As the sun went down and the shadows stretched across the forest floor, I felt a mix of excitement and nerves settle in my stomach. This was my first time camping alone, a challenge I'd been eager to take on to get away from city life. The woods were thick with tall trees that whispered in the breeze. I set up camp near a bubbling stream, feeling a sense of peace wash over me. The crackling fire warmed my hands as I toasted marshmallows, their sweet smell mixing with the cool evening air. Night fell fast, shrouding the forest in darkness. I heard the rustling of animals and the occasional owl hooting in the distance. Around midnight I heard a sound, a deep, growling noise echoing through the trees. My heart raced as I strained to figure out what it could be. Was it a bear? A mountain lion? I gripped my flashlight tightly, scanning around, but saw nothing. The growl came again, closer this time, sending chills down my spine. Fear gripped me as I realized I was alone, far from any help. I reached for my pocket knife, my only protection against whatever lurked in the dark. Every little noise, a twig snapping, leaves rustling, made me jump. I stayed still, listening hard for any sign of danger. Suddenly, a figure emerged from the shadows, a rough-looking man, disheveled and wide-eyed. He stumbled towards me, mumbling incomprehensibly. Relief washed over me as I realized he was human, though clearly distressed. He collapsed by the fire, shaking uncontrollably. I gave him water and tried to calm him down. Between gasps, he managed to say a few words. He'd been lost for days, surviving on berries and water from the stream. His eyes darted nervously around, as if expecting something to leap out of the darkness. With dawn nearing, I faced a dilemma. I couldn't leave him alone in the woods but staying with a stranger made me uneasy. We packed up quickly and started back towards civilization. Along the way, he told me about his ordeal of being separated from his hiking group and wandering aimlessly through the tough terrain. As we neared the trail's end, a chill ran down my spine. I couldn't shake the feeling of being watched. My senses were on high alert, scanning the trees for any movement. The man seemed agitated too, glancing over his shoulder constantly. Finally, we reached the trailhead. I called for help on my phone, guiding rescuers to where he'd last been seen. He thanked me profusely, but there was an uneasiness in his voice. We parted ways, and as I walked back to my car, I couldn't shake the feeling that something wasn't right. It was as if the woods held secrets that weren't meant to be uncovered, a lingering sense of danger that stayed with me long after I left. That night in the woods taught me that sometimes, the scariest things aren't what you can see, but what you can't, the unknown lurking just beyond the firelight, waiting to be discovered in the depths of the wilderness. I was worn out when I arrived at the cabin. It had been a long week at work and I really needed a break. The cabin was hidden deep in the woods, far from the nearest town. It was old, passed down through my family for generations, but I loved its charm. The first night was calm. I sat by the fireplace, enjoying the warmth and the quiet. The only sounds were the crackling fire and the wind rustling through the trees. I went to bed early, eager to enjoy my weekend. The next morning, I woke up to the sound of rain. It was pouring, pounding against the roof and windows. I decided to stay inside, read, and sip coffee. The storm didn't let up, and the sky was a dark, threatening gray. By late afternoon, the power went out. I wasn't too worried. The cabin had plenty of candles and lanterns. I lit a few and kept reading. As night fell, the storm grew stronger. The wind howled, and I could hear branches breaking outside. The cabin felt more lonely than ever. Suddenly, there was a loud thud against the side of the cabin. I jumped, my heart racing. I told myself it was just a branch blown loose by the storm. But then I heard it again, this time from the back of the cabin. The thuds kept coming, moving around the cabin, each one sending chills down my spine. I grabbed a flashlight and checked the windows. The rain made it hard to see, but I didn't spot anything unusual. The thudding stopped and I tried to calm down. I reminded myself that I was alone out here. 
It was just the storm playing tricks on my mind. Later that night, I woke up to a strange noise. It was a faint scratching, coming from the front door. I froze, listening closely. The scratching grew louder, more insistent. I felt a knot of fear tighten in my stomach. I forced myself to get out of bed and walk to the door. The flashlight shook in my hand as I got closer. The scratching stopped suddenly, leaving an eerie silence. I opened the door a crack, shining the light outside. There was nothing there, just the rain pouring down. I closed the door and double-checked the locks. As I turned to go back to bed, I noticed muddy footprints on the wooden floor, leading from the door to the living room. My heart pounded in my chest. I hadn't left the cabin all day, and I hadn't walked through the mud. I followed the footprints cautiously, my breath coming in short gasps. They led to the window by the fireplace. I looked out but saw only darkness. Fear gripped me, and I decided I couldn't stay another night. I packed my things quickly, glancing over my shoulder every few seconds. As I stepped outside, the rain had finally stopped. The air was cold and fresh. I hurried to my car, my nerves still on edge. As I drove away, I glanced back at the cabin one last time. It stood there, silent and dark, with no sign of the strange events that had happened. The next morning, I called a friend to check the cabin with me. We found no footprints, no signs of anyone having been there. It seemed like the storm and my isolation had played tricks on my mind. I was relieved but decided it was best to leave the cabin alone for a while. Weeks later, I returned to the cabin with some friends for a weekend getaway. The place felt different with people around, less scary. We laughed and enjoyed ourselves, the strange night now just a distant memory. But late at night, as everyone else slept, I couldn't shake the feeling of being watched. In the quiet, I heard a faint scratching sound at the window. My heart raced as I lay there, staring into the darkness. I never told my friends about it. Some things are better left unsaid. I had been craving a break from the city. The constant noise, the rush, the never-ending stress, it was all getting to me. So, when I found an old cabin for rent deep in the woods, I jumped at the chance. The pictures online showed a cozy little place surrounded by trees with a small lake nearby. It looked perfect. I got there on a Friday afternoon. The drive was longer than I thought, with narrow roads twisting through thick forest. By the time I reached the cabin, the sun was setting, casting long shadows over the clearing. The cabin looked just like the pictures, old but charming, with a porch and a rocking chair out front. Inside, it was simple but comfortable. There was a small kitchen, a living room with an old fireplace, and a bedroom with a big window overlooking the woods. I unpacked my stuff, made a quick dinner, and settled into an armchair with a book. That night, I slept deeply the kind of sleep that only comes when you're far away from your usual worries. But the next morning, I woke up feeling uneasy. It wasn't anything specific, just a feeling that something was off. I brushed it off as city nerves and decided to go for a hike to clear my head. The trail behind the cabin was overgrown but walkable. I walked for about an hour, enjoying the fresh air and the sound of birds. When I turned back, I noticed the cabin seemed smaller from a distance almost blending into the trees. As the day went on, the uneasy feeling grew. I kept hearing noises, the creak of the floorboards, the rustle of leaves outside, a distant thump. I told myself it was just the sounds of an old house in the forest, but it didn't help. That evening, I built a fire and tried to relax. As the night grew darker, the noises became clearer. It sounded like footsteps outside, slow and steady. I got up and looked out the window but saw nothing. Just the trees, swaying a little in the breeze. I decided to go to bed early, hoping sleep would come quickly. But the noises continued, and now they seemed to be inside the house. The creak of the floorboards was closer, the thumps louder. I lay in bed, my heart racing, listening to every sound. Then I saw it, the front door was slightly open. I was sure I had locked it. 
I got up, my hands shaking, and closed it firmly. But as I turned back to the bedroom, I saw something that made my blood run cold. Muddy footprints led from the door to the kitchen. They weren't mine. I grabbed a kitchen knife and backed into the bedroom, locking the door. I called the police, whispering into the phone. They said it would take at least half an hour to get to me. I sat on the bed, gripping the knife, listening to the sounds of someone moving around outside the door. Minutes felt like hours. The footsteps outside my door were constant, and the doorknob jiggled once. I held my breath, hoping the lock would hold. Then, suddenly, there was silence. The only sound was my own heartbeat, loud in my ears. After what felt like forever, I heard sirens in the distance. I stayed locked in the bedroom until the police arrived. They found the door open, but no one inside. The footprints led back out into the forest, disappearing into the underbrush. The police couldn't find any sign of who it was. They suggested it was a drifter or someone looking for shelter. I didn't care. I packed my things and left the cabin that night, not stopping until I was back in the city. I never went back to that cabin. It took a long time for the fear to fade, but eventually it did. Now, when I need a break, I choose a place with more people around. The peace and quiet of the woods aren't worth the terror of feeling truly alone. Every now and then, I still have nightmares about that night. In them, I hear those footsteps outside my door and I see the door slowly creak open. And in the shadows, there's always the shape of someone standing there, just watching. I decided to take a break from the busy city life. I found a small cabin in the woods online, far from the nearest town. It looked like the perfect spot for a quiet week away. The pictures made it look cozy, and I was ready for some peace and quiet. When I got there, the cabin was just like the pictures. It was a simple wooden cabin with a small porch and a chimney that hinted at a fireplace inside. The forest around it was thick with tall trees and a carpet of leaves. The air was fresh, and I felt calm as I unpacked my bags. The first night was uneventful. I made a simple dinner, read a book by the fire, and went to bed early. The quiet was a bit creepy at first, but I soon got used to it. It was nice to be away from the constant noise of the city. The next day, I decided to explore. I took a long walk through the woods, following a path that looped back to the cabin. It was a beautiful day, and I felt connected to nature in a way I hadn't in a long time. That evening, as the sun set, I noticed something strange. There were no sounds of animals. No birds, no rustling in the bushes, nothing. It was like the forest had gone completely silent. I shrugged it off, thinking maybe it was just in my head, and went inside to start a fire. Around midnight, I was woken up by a noise outside. It sounded like footsteps, slow and steady, crunching through the leaves. My heart started pounding. I told myself it was probably just an animal but the footsteps sounded too heavy for that. I got out of bed and looked out the window. The moon was bright, casting long shadows across the ground. I couldn't see anything unusual. I listened carefully, but the footsteps had stopped. I told myself I was just being paranoid and went back to bed. The next night, the footsteps came again, but this time they were closer. I lay in bed, holding my breath, hoping they would go away but they didn't. They circled the cabin slowly, almost like someone was checking the place out. I didn't dare move. Morning came, and I decided I couldn't take it anymore. I packed my things and decided to leave. As I was loading my car, I found something strange on the ground near the porch. It was a small, handmade doll, crudely made from twigs and string. It hadn't been there before. I felt a chill run down my spine. I quickly finished packing and drove away, my eyes darting to the rearview mirror the whole time. When I got back to the city, I couldn't shake the feeling of unease. I told a friend about my experience, and she suggested I look up the area online. I found out that the woods near the cabin had a dark history. People had gone missing there over the years, and some locals believed the forest was cursed. 
I didn't believe in ghosts, but something about the place felt wrong. In the end, I was just glad to be home, safe and sound. But the experience stayed with me. A few weeks later, I was going through my photos from the trip. As I zoomed in on a picture of the cabin, I noticed something in the background. There, among the trees, was a dark figure watching me. I felt a shiver run down my spine. I never went back to that cabin, and I still have nightmares about those footsteps and that dark figure. It was a reminder that some things are better left unexplored. Sometimes, the unknown is more terrifying than any ghost story. I was hiking alone in a thick forest on a cool fall afternoon. The sky was cloudy, letting in only a dim light through the dense trees. The air was cold, and the fallen leaves crunched under my feet as I walked deeper into the woods. It was supposed to be a short trip to clear my mind, but I had lost track of time and direction. As the hours passed, the forest became strangely quiet. There were no bird calls, no rustling of small animals, just the sound of my breathing and the occasional snap of a twig under my boots. I started to feel uneasy. My phone had no signal, and the sun was beginning to set. The thought of spending the night in the forest alone made me feel scared. I began to walk faster, hoping to find the trail back, but the woods seemed to close in around me. Every tree looked the same, and the path I thought I was following had vanished. Panic began to set in as it got dark. I had no flashlight, only the weak light of my phone to guide me. The forest grew colder, and shadows got longer, creating strange shapes that played tricks on my eyes. My mind raced with the worst thoughts. I could hear my heartbeat pounding in my ears. The feeling of being watched was overwhelming, though I knew it was just my fear getting to me. After what felt like hours, I stumbled upon a small open space. In the middle of it stood an old, abandoned cabin. Relief washed over me. Maybe I could find shelter for the night. I approached carefully, the floorboards creaking under my weight as I stepped inside. The cabin was empty, except for a few broken pieces of furniture and a dusty old lantern. I lit it and felt a small bit of comfort in the warm glow it provided. As I settled in, I noticed a trail of fresh footprints leading away from the cabin into the woods. Curiosity fought with fear, but the need to find help won. I followed the footprints, which were clearly made by someone in boots like mine. The trail was winding and hard to follow in the dark but the faint light from the cabin behind me gave me some direction. Suddenly, I heard a distant sound of rushing water. Hope filled me. Water often meant people nearby. I walked faster, the sound growing louder with each step. Finally, I broke through the trees and found myself standing at the edge of a river. Across the river, I could see the faint lights of a small town. Relief and joy washed over me. I had made it out of the forest. I carefully crossed the river, the cold water biting at my legs, but I didn't care. I was safe. As I reached the other side, I turned back to look at the dark woods one last time, grateful that I had made it through. The townspeople were kind and helped me warm up and find my way home. I learned that the forest was known for its confusing paths, and many hikers had similar experiences. I vowed never to hike alone again but I was grateful for the lesson learned and the strength I found within myself. Months later, I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched. Even in the safety of my home, I sometimes felt eyes on me. One night, as I was lying in bed, I heard the faint sound of leaves crunching outside my window. My heart raced as I peered into the darkness, half expecting to see the same forest I had escaped from. But all I saw was my backyard. Yet, as I turned away, I saw a muddy footprint on the floor by the door. A boot print, similar to mine. I had always loved camping, the peace of the forest, the crackle of the campfire, and the feeling of getting away from it all. One weekend, I decided to go to a remote spot I had read about online. It was supposed to be beautiful, with a clear lake and great trails. I packed my stuff and left early in the morning, excited for a weekend alone. 
The drive was long and took me deep into the woods. The road turned to dirt, and the trees closed in around me. I felt a thrill of excitement. I arrived at the campsite in the late afternoon, set up my tent quickly, and gathered some firewood. As evening came, I lit a fire and cooked a simple meal. The quiet of the forest was comforting, and I settled in for a peaceful night. But as the fire burned down to embers, I started to feel uneasy. The silence was too complete, too heavy. I shook it off, thinking it was just because the place was new to me. I crawled into my tent and tried to sleep. I woke up suddenly in the middle of the night. I lay still, listening. There was a rustling outside the tent. It was soft at first, almost like the wind, but it got louder. It wasn't the wind. My heart pounded as I strained to hear. The sound was definitely footsteps. I told myself it was an animal. But then I heard a low, rough voice. It was faint, like a whisper on the wind. I couldn't make out the words, but the tone was scary. My blood ran cold. No one was supposed to be out here. I was alone, miles from the nearest town. I stayed still, barely breathing. The footsteps circled my tent, slow and deliberate. The voice came and went, getting clearer then fading away. I was frozen with fear. I reached for my flashlight but stopped, scared the light would give me away. Minutes felt like hours. Eventually, the footsteps faded into the distance, and the forest fell silent again. I stayed awake the rest of the night, every sound making my fear worse. I waited for dawn, counting the minutes until the first light seeped through the tent. As soon as it was light enough to see, I packed up my gear quickly. My mind was racing with questions and fears. I needed to get out of there. The drive back felt longer than the drive-in. I kept checking my mirrors, half expecting to see someone following me. I reached home exhausted but relieved. The safety of my house had never felt so welcoming. I couldn't shake the feeling of being watched for days. I still don't know who or what was out there that night, but I learned to trust my instincts. A week later... I was still on edge. Then, one evening as I was closing the blinds, I saw something that made my heart stop. In the distance, just at the edge of my property, there was a figure standing in the shadows. It was the same low, rough voice I had heard that night in the woods, whispering my name. I haven't been camping since. I decided to go camping alone to clear my head. The forest always made me feel calm, and I was excited about a quiet weekend in nature. I packed my stuff, grabbed some food, and drove to a remote campsite I found online. It was a two-hour hike from the nearest road, promising peace and quiet. The first day went great. I set up my tent, collected firewood, and enjoyed the silence. The only sounds were birds singing and leaves rustling. As the sun went down, I made a fire and cooked a simple meal. The night sky was clear, and the stars were shining. It was perfect. I woke up early the next morning, eager to explore. I hiked through the thick forest, following a narrow path winding through the trees. The air was fresh, and the view was beautiful. Around noon, I returned to my campsite for lunch. As I was eating, I noticed something strange another set of footprints near my tent. They were fresh and definitely not mine. A shiver ran down my back. I looked around, trying to see anyone, but the forest was silent. I brushed it off, telling myself it was probably nothing. Maybe a park ranger had passed by, I thought. I stayed close to my camp for the rest of the day, feeling uneasy but trying not to let it spoil my trip. That night, as I lay in my tent, I heard footsteps outside. They were slow and deliberate, crunching on the fallen leaves. My heart raced. I listened, barely breathing, as the footsteps circled my tent. Then, just as suddenly as they started, they stopped. I waited, every muscle tense, but there was only silence. After what felt like forever, I fell into a restless sleep. When I woke up, the sun was just rising. I quickly packed my things deciding it was time to go home. As I hiked back to my car, 
I couldn't shake the feeling of being watched. I kept glancing over my shoulder, but I saw nothing. Finally, I reached the road in my car. Relief washed over me as I threw my gear into the trunk and got behind the wheel. As I drove away, I glanced in the rearview mirror and saw a figure standing at the edge of the trees. It was too far to see clearly, but I knew it wasn't my imagination. Someone had been there, watching me. I didn't stop until I was home. The relief I felt was overwhelming. I realized how close I had come to something potentially dangerous. It could have been someone just passing through or something more sinister, but I didn't care to find out. That camping trip taught me to be more careful. It reminded me of the unpredictability of nature and the presence of others, even in the most secluded places. I never went camping alone again, and I always made sure someone knew where I was going. Weeks later, I was still haunted by that trip. One night, I received a call from an unknown number. The voice on the other end was a whisper, barely audible, but it was clear. I saw you, it said. I know where you live. Chills ran down my spine as I hung up, my mind racing with fear and questions. The sense of relief I had felt was gone, replaced by a nagging worry that someone, somewhere, was still watching me. I decided to go camping alone in the woods for the weekend. I needed a break from my busy life. The fresh air and peace sounded like the perfect getaway. I packed my stuff, tossed it in my car, and drove to a quiet spot a friend told me about. It was supposed to be far away from everything, just what I wanted. The drive was calm, and I felt relaxed as I went deeper into the forest. When I got there, I found a small open area near a river. It was perfect. I set up my tent, gathered some firewood, and started a small campfire. The crackling of the fire and the gentle flow of the river were the only sounds around me. I cooked a simple dinner and enjoyed the peace. As night came, the woods around me grew darker. I had a small flashlight, but I liked the natural light of the fire better. I sat by the fire for a while, just listening to the sounds of nature. It was peaceful, but I couldn't shake off a weird feeling. I brushed it off, thinking it was just because I was alone in the woods for the first time. I decided to call it a night and got into my tent. I left the fire burning low, just enough to keep me warm. I fell asleep quickly, tired from the day. Sometime in the middle of the night, I woke up to the sound of rustling outside my tent. My heart started racing. I listened closely, hoping it was just an animal passing by. The rustling continued, getting closer to my tent. I held my breath, trying to stay as quiet as possible. Suddenly, the rustling stopped, and I heard footsteps. They were slow and steady, circling my tent. Fear washed over me. I reached for my flashlight and turned it on. The light cut through the darkness, but I saw nothing. The footsteps stopped, and everything went silent. I waited, listening for any sign of movement. Minutes passed, but it felt like hours. I finally gathered the courage to unzip my tent a bit and peek outside. The fire had almost died out, casting a creepy glow around the campsite. There was no one there. I couldn't see anything strange. I told myself it must have been my imagination and tried to go back to sleep. But sleep didn't come easily. The next morning, I woke up early, still scared from the night before. I decided to cut my trip short and pack up. As I was taking down my tent, I noticed something that made my blood run cold. Around my campsite there were clear footprints in the dirt. They were human footprints, too big to be an animal. They circled my tent and led back into the woods. Someone had been watching me. I quickly finished packing and started my hike back to my car. The whole way, I couldn't shake the feeling of being watched. I kept looking over my shoulder, but I never saw anyone. When I finally reached my car, I threw my stuff in the back and drove away fast. The sense of relief I felt as I left those woods was huge. I told the park rangers about what happened when I got home. They took it seriously and said they would look into it. They assured me they would patrol the area more often to keep other campers safe. 
I never went back to that spot. The woods may be beautiful, but I'll never forget the fear I felt that night. The sense of being watched and the footprints made it too scary to ever return. In the end, I was safe, and the park rangers increased their presence in the area. I learned to trust my instincts and never let my guard down, even in the most peaceful places. My love for camping didn't go away, but I chose my spots more carefully and always went with a friend. But sometimes, late at night, I still think about those footsteps and the feeling of someone watching me. I wonder if whoever it was is still out there, waiting in the woods for their next visitor. I needed a break from city life, so I rented a cabin in the woods for the weekend. I craved some alone time, and the idea of peace and quiet seemed perfect. The cabin was simple, surrounded by tall trees, with a small lake nearby. The closest town was about an hour's drive away. On the first night, the silence was overwhelming. I heard every rustle, every creak of the wooden walls. I told myself it was just my city nerves getting used to the wilderness. I sat by the fire, reading a book until my eyes grew heavy. Just as I was about to go to bed, I heard a loud thud outside. I froze, listening carefully. Another thud followed closer this time. I grabbed a flashlight and carefully stepped outside. The cold air hit my skin as I looked around in the darkness. Nothing seemed out of place. I told myself it was just an animal and went back inside, locking the door behind me. The next day, I spent my time exploring the woods around the cabin. The fresh air and exercise improved my mood. By the time I got back to the cabin, the sun was setting. I cooked a simple dinner and settled in for another quiet evening. As I was cleaning up, I noticed something strange. The window above the sink, which I was sure I had closed, was slightly open. A chill ran down my spine. I locked it securely this time. That night, I had trouble sleeping. Every little noise seemed louder. Around midnight, I heard what sounded like footsteps on the porch. I lay still, heart pounding, listening closely. The footsteps stopped, but I couldn't shake the feeling of being watched. Morning came, and I decided to cut my trip short. As I packed, I noticed faint muddy footprints leading from the porch to the window I had found open last night. Panic set in. I quickly loaded my car and left, not looking back. Driving away, I kept glancing in the rearview mirror, half expecting to see someone following me. As the cabin disappeared from view, I felt a mix of relief and lingering fear. Once back in the safety of my apartment, I couldn't stop thinking about the cabin. I did some research and found out that the area had a history of break-ins. It seemed someone had been using the cabins to steal supplies when they were empty. I was glad I had trusted my instincts and left when I did. The experience left me shaken and reminded me to always be careful. I realized how lucky I was to get away unharmed. That was enough for me. But the relief didn't last. A week later, I received a small package in the mail. No return address. Inside was a single item, the book I had been reading by the fire that first night. I knew I had left it behind in my rush to leave the cabin. There was a note inside, written in shaky handwriting. I'll see you soon. The sense of safety I had felt in my apartment evaporated. I realized that sometimes, the peace and quiet we seek can hide real dangers. The city's noise now felt like a protective blanket. The woods, with all their beauty, now held a shadow that haunted me, reminding me that I was never truly alone. I always thought spending a weekend alone in a cabin in the woods would be relaxing. I wanted to get away from my stressful life for a bit. I rented a small cabin that looked perfect. It was far from the nearest town, surrounded by tall trees and the sounds of nature. The first night was calm. I read a book by the fireplace, drank some tea, and fell asleep listening to an owl hooting far away. The second day, I decided to look around the area. I walked through the thick forest, 
enjoying the fresh air and quiet. By the time I got back, it was late afternoon. I made a simple dinner and got ready for the night. As it got dark, the cabin felt different. What was cozy before now felt creepy and lonely. I tried to ignore it, thinking it was just because I wasn't used to being alone in a strange place. I locked the doors and windows and went to bed, hoping to sleep well. In the middle of the night, a faint noise woke me up. It sounded like something scratching softly at the window. My heart started pounding as I lay still, trying to hear better. The scratching got louder and more constant. I told myself it was just a tree branch brushing against the window, but it sounded too steady. I got out of bed, my legs shaking, and slowly walked to the window. I pulled back the curtain, expecting to see a branch moving in the wind. But I saw nothing but darkness. The scratching had stopped. I took a deep breath, trying to calm down, and went back to bed. Just as I was about to fall asleep, the noise started again, this time at the back door. It was clear, something or someone was trying to get in. Panic hit me. I grabbed a flashlight and a small kitchen knife, and slowly walked to the door. I could hear my own breathing, fast and shallow, as I reached for the doorknob. Suddenly, the scratching stopped. I stood there, frozen, waiting for something to happen. Minutes passed, and all I could hear was my pounding heart. I decided to turn on all the lights in the cabin, hoping to scare away whatever was outside. The sudden brightness made the cabin feel less scary, but I knew I wouldn't sleep. I spent the rest of the night sitting in a chair by the front door, holding the knife and flashlight, listening for any noise. The hours went by slowly, and by dawn, I was tired but glad nothing happened. As soon as the sun came up, I packed my stuff and decided to leave. The peaceful getaway I wanted had turned into a nightmare. As I drove away, I saw something that made my blood run cold, a set of footprints in the mud, leading from the back door to the edge of the forest. I never found out who or what was outside the cabin that night. I told the local police, but they didn't find any signs of anyone being there. It could have been a joke, an animal, or something worse. I'll never know. I made it back home safely, but the relief didn't last. Every creak of my house, every rustle outside, made my skin crawl. I keep my doors and windows locked tight now, always on edge, always listening. Sometimes, late at night, I still hear that soft scratching, and I wonder if whatever was out there in the woods has followed me home. I always thought a weekend alone in a cabin would be the perfect escape. No noise, no people, just peace. I rented a small, old cabin deep in the woods, far from any town. The owner said it hadn't been used in a while but promised it was clean and taken care of. The drive there was boring. I reached the cabin just before sunset. It looked exactly like the photos, old, with peeling paint and a small porch. Inside was cozy but dark with just enough furniture to be comfortable. I unpacked quickly and decided to take a walk before it got too dark. The woods were quiet, almost too quiet. I followed a narrow path, watching the light fade between the trees. I didn't go far, just enough to stretch my legs and see the place. As the sky got darker, I headed back. That's when I noticed something strange. The cabin door was open. I was sure I had closed it. I stood there for a moment, heart pounding, before stepping inside. Everything seemed untouched. Maybe I had left it open after all. I tried to shake off the bad feeling and lock the door, double-checking this time. That night, I couldn't sleep. Every creak and rustle sounded louder in the stillness. Around midnight, I heard something outside. It was faint, like a footstep. I held my breath, listening. There it was again, closer this time. I sat up, heart racing, and looked out the window. The darkness was thick and scary. I grabbed a flashlight and carefully opened the door. The beam of light cut through the night, showing nothing but trees and shadows. I stepped out, scanning the area. Suddenly, a movement caught my eye, a figure darting behind a tree. Hello? I called out, 
trying to keep my voice steady. No answer. I back towards the cabin, flashlight shaking in my hand. As I reached the door, I saw it, a small, worn backpack lying on the porch. I grabbed the backpack and went inside, locking the door behind me. I dumped its contents onto the table, clothes, a water bottle, some food, and a notebook. Flipping through the pages, I found drawings of the cabin and notes about my arrival. Someone had been watching me. Fear set in. I dialed 911, but there was no signal. I had no choice but to wait out the night. I blocked the door with furniture and sat in the corner, eyes glued to the windows. Hours passed, each minute dragging longer than the last. Finally, the first light of dawn came through the trees. I decided to leave immediately. Packing up quickly, I ran to my car and sped down the dirt road. I didn't stop until I reached the nearest town. I went straight to the police and told them everything. They took me seriously and sent a unit to check the cabin. A few days later, I got a call. The police had found signs of someone living in the woods near the cabin but no trace of them since. They said I was safe, but the experience left a mark. I never went back to that cabin. The owner gave me a refund and apologized a lot. I learned that being alone isn't always peaceful, and that sometimes, the real danger is the unpredictability of people. Months later, I was back home, feeling like I had moved on from the whole ordeal. One night, I found an old, worn notebook under my porch, the same one from the cabin. I opened it to find new sketches, of my house and notes about my daily routine. Someone had followed me home. I found myself walking through the thick forest, my legs getting tired from the long hike. It was supposed to be a simple camping trip, just a break from the craziness of everyday life. The forest was beautiful in the daytime, with the sun shining warm, golden rays through the leaves. But now, as it started to get dark, the trees looked a lot scarier. I had left the campsite to gather some firewood, thinking it would be a quick trip. But as I walked, I realized I had lost track of time and direction. My heart started pounding as I looked around, recognizing nothing. I tried to stay calm, reminding myself that panicking wouldn't help. I tried to go back the way I came, but the forest seemed to be closing in on me. The tall trees, once comforting, now loomed over me like silent guards. The bushes rustled with unseen movements, and every snap of a twig made my pulse quicken. I knew there were animals out here, and the thought of running into a wild boar or a bear was enough to make my hands shake. As the last light of the day disappeared, I fumbled for my flashlight. Its weak beam barely cut through the thick darkness, but it was better than nothing. I kept walking, hoping to find something familiar, a landmark that would guide me back to the campsite. The air grew colder, and the sounds of the forest became louder, the hoot of an owl the distant cry of some night creature. Hours seemed to pass. My feet ached, and my stomach growled. I cursed myself for not paying more attention, for not being more prepared. I had no signal on my phone, so calling for help wasn't an option. I was truly alone. But then, in the distance, I saw a flicker of light. My heart jumped with hope. I moved towards it, stumbling over roots and rocks in my haste. As I got closer, the light grew brighter, and I could make out the shape of a small cabin. Relief washed over me. I wasn't sure if anyone was inside, but it was a place of shelter, at least. I knocked on the door, my knuckles rapping loudly in the quiet night. To my surprise, the door creaked open slightly. I pushed it further, peering inside. The cabin was empty, but it looked like someone had been there recently. A fire burned in the fireplace casting a warm glow. I stepped inside, closing the door behind me. The warmth was a welcome change from the chilly forest. I found a note on the table, written in hurried handwriting. It read, If you're lost, stay here. Help will come in the morning. I sat down in front of the fire, feeling a sense of safety for the first time in hours. Whoever had left the note had probably gone for help. I wrapped myself in a blanket from the bed, letting the heat seep into my bones. 
As I drifted off to sleep, I felt grateful for the unknown person who had left this place ready for a lost wanderer like me. But my sleep was not peaceful. I woke up to the sound of footsteps outside the cabin. At first, I thought it was the help that the note had promised. I looked through the window but saw nothing but darkness. The footsteps stopped right outside the door. I held my breath, listening. The doorknob rattled, and I felt my heart leap into my throat. Suddenly, the door creaked open slowly. A shadowy figure stood in the doorway, its eyes glowing in the dim light of the dying fire. I froze, unable to move. The figure stepped inside, and I could see its features more clearly. It was not human. Its skin was gray and rough, its eyes black pits that seemed to suck in all the light. I tried to scream, but no sound came out. The creature moved closer, its breath a cold, fetid wind on my face. It reached out a hand, its fingers long and clawed. I backed away, but there was nowhere to go. Just as its hand was about to touch me, there was a blinding flash of light. The creature hissed and retreated, vanishing into the darkness. I blinked, trying to adjust my eyes to the sudden brightness. Standing in the doorway was a park ranger, his flashlight cutting through the gloom. Are you okay? he asked, his voice full of concern. I nodded, too shaken to speak. He helped me up and led me out of the cabin. As we walked back to the campsite, he told me that there had been reports of strange sightings in the area, but no one had ever seen the creature up close. I shuddered, thinking about how close I had come to being one of those reports. When we finally reached the campsite, I thanked the ranger and sat down by the fire, my hands still shaking. I had learned a valuable lesson about the unpredictability of nature and the importance of being prepared. But most of all, I had learned that even in the darkest moments, there is something much darker waiting in the shadows. I never planned to spend the night lost in the forest. It started as a simple hike to clear my head and get away from everything. The path was easy to follow, and I had walked it many times before. But this time, something went wrong. I must have taken a wrong turn, lost in my thoughts. Before I knew it, the sun was setting, and I had no idea where I was. The tall trees around me all looked the same, their thick branches blocking out what little light was left. I tried to find my way back, but every path seemed to lead deeper into the woods. As night fell, it got colder. I cursed myself for not bringing a jacket. My phone had no signal, and its battery was almost dead. I had a flashlight, but it didn't make me feel much safer in the dark, shadowy forest. The sounds of the night got louder. The rustling of leaves, the occasional snap of a twig, every noise made my heart race. I tried to stay calm, telling myself that there were no dangerous animals around. But the feeling of being watched wouldn't go away. I kept moving, hoping to find a landmark or any sign of the trail. My flashlight flickered and went out, leaving me in total darkness. Panic set in. I stumbled blindly, tripping over roots and rocks, until I couldn't go any further. Tired and shivering, I sat down, leaning against a tree for support. The hours dragged on. I tried to stay awake, but exhaustion finally took over. I dozed off, waking at every sound, my nerves on edge. Finally, the first light of dawn broke through the trees. Relieved, I got up and started walking again, this time able to see where I was going. After what felt like hours, I heard the faint sound of running water. Following the sound, I found a small stream. I knew this stream. It ran next to the main trail. With new energy, I followed it downstream. After a while, I saw the familiar wooden bridge that marked the start of the trail. Relief washed over me as I crossed the bridge and made my way back to the parking lot. My car was the only one there. I sat inside, locked the doors, and took a long, shaky breath. As I drove home, I promised myself I would never hike alone again without being better prepared. The experience had been terrifying, and it taught me to be more careful and respect nature. I was safe, but as I glanced in the rearview mirror, I could have sworn I saw a shadow move in the back seat. I quickly looked again, but it was empty. Just my tired mind playing tricks on me, I told myself. 
but the uneasy feeling stayed with me all the way home, leaving me to wonder if I had really been alone out there after all. I had been hiking for hours, my legs aching from the rough ground. The forest was thick, and the tall trees seemed to close in around me. The path I had been following was barely there, covered in fallen leaves and branches. It was getting late, and the light was fading fast. I knew I needed to find my way out before it got completely dark. I pulled out my map and tried to figure out where I was, but nothing looked familiar. The forest seemed never-ending, and every direction looked the same. I felt a tight knot of worry in my chest. I took a deep breath and reminded myself to stay calm. Panicking wouldn't help me now. As I walked, I heard the occasional rustling in the bushes, probably animals going about their business. Still, the sounds made me uneasy. The forest was so quiet otherwise, the silence pressing down on me. My flashlight was my only comfort, casting a small circle of light ahead of me. After what felt like hours, I stumbled upon an old, overgrown trail. It was faint, but it was something. I decided to follow it, hoping it would lead me out of this maze. The trail was narrow and winding, making it hard to see far ahead. I had to move slowly, carefully stepping over roots and rocks. Then I saw it, a cabin. It was small and looked abandoned, but the sight of it brought me a surge of hope. Maybe there would be something inside that could help me. I approached cautiously, my flashlight beam flickering over the old wood and broken windows. I pushed the door open, and it creaked loudly in the stillness. Inside, the cabin was musty and dark, but I found a lantern and some matches on a dusty shelf. I lit the lantern, and the warm glow filled the room. In the corner, there was a map pinned to the wall. I studied it carefully and realized it showed the forest trails, including a path that led back to the main road. Relief washed over me. I memorized the route and set out again, the lantern lighting my way. The trail was clearer now, and I moved with a new sense of purpose. As I walked, the forest gradually began to thin, and I could see the sky again. The stars were out, and the air felt cooler, fresher. Finally, I emerged onto the main road. The sight of it was the most beautiful thing I had ever seen. I was exhausted but relieved. I knew I was safe. I started walking along the road, heading toward the distant lights of a nearby town. The ordeal had shaken me, but I felt stronger for having made it through. As I walked, I promised myself I'd be better prepared next time. When I finally reached the town, I found a small inn where I could rest. The warmth and safety of the place felt like a dream. I settled into my room, feeling the comfort of being indoors again. But as I lay in bed, something nagged at the back of my mind. The map in the cabin, it was too convenient, too perfect. I got up and checked my backpack. The map I had been using before was gone. My heart started pounding as I realized it might not have been a coincidence that I found that cabin. What if someone had been watching me, guiding me? I looked out the window into the darkness the trees swaying in the wind. I couldn't shake the feeling that I was still being watched. The forest, which had seemed so alive and full of threats, now seemed to have eyes. I closed the curtains and tried to convince myself it was just my imagination. But deep down, I knew I'd never forget that night in the forest. And I couldn't help but feel that I hadn't truly escaped. The forest had let me go, but only for now. The feeling of being watched lingered, leaving me with chills that wouldn't go away. The sun was setting as I found myself deep in the woods, far from any known path. I had been hiking for hours, hoping to see some animals, but now the forest seemed to close in around me. The thick branches above let through only small bits of fading light, casting long, spooky shadows on the ground. I walked faster, hoping to find my way back before darkness fell completely. Every rustle of leaves, every crack of a twig underfoot sent chills down my spine. I had no map, no compass, just a rough idea of the way. My phone was useless, out of range with no signal. 
As I kept walking, the forest grew darker and quieter. The birds had stopped their evening songs, and the only sound was my own breathing, heavy with worry. I came across a narrow path, barely visible, but it seemed like my best option. I followed it, hoping it would lead me out. Minutes felt like hours, and the path twisted and turned, leading me deeper into the unknown. The trees were thicker here, their branches like bony arms reaching out to grab me. I tripped over roots and rocks, my legs growing tired and my mind fighting against rising panic. Then I saw it. A small clearing up ahead bathed in a soft, strange light. Relief washed over me as I stepped into the open space. In the middle of the clearing stood an old, worn-out cabin. It looked abandoned, but the sight of it brought a strange comfort. Shelter, at least for the night. I approached the cabin carefully, pushing open the creaking door. Inside, it was musty and dim, but there was a small fireplace and a stack of firewood. I set to work, building a fire to fight off the cold and the darkness. The flames crackled to life, casting a warm glow that pushed back the shadows. As the fire grew, I found an old map pinned to the wall. It showed the surrounding area, with a marked trail leading back to civilization. Relief washed over me. I now had a way out, a clear path to follow in the morning. I settled down by the fire, exhaustion pulling me into sleep. The warmth and light of the flames were a comforting presence, and I felt the stress of the day start to melt away. When I woke at dawn, the forest seemed less threatening, the path more clear. With renewed energy, I followed the map's directions, the sun rising behind me, lighting my way. By midday, I emerged from the forest, back onto a familiar trail. The sense of relief was overwhelming. I had faced the darkness, the fear of the unknown, and come out the other side. From that day forward, I never ventured into the woods unprepared. But something about that cabin stayed with me. As I walked away, I could have sworn I heard the faint echo of footsteps behind me, just out of sight. Whenever I think back to that night, I wonder if I was really alone in that forest, or if something, or someone, was watching me all along. One Saturday morning, I decided to go hiking alone. The weather was perfect, sunny but not too hot, with a light breeze. I picked a trail in the mountains I hadn't tried before. It was known to be tough, but I felt up for the challenge. The first few miles were quiet. I enjoyed the peace, listening to birds singing and the leaves crunching under my boots. The trail was narrow and twisted its way through thick woods. After a while, the trees grew denser, and the path became harder to follow. There were no signs or markers, and I started to feel a bit worried. I checked my phone for the map, but there was no signal. I had a printed map in my backpack, so I took it out. The trail was supposed to split into two a few miles ahead, but I wasn't sure if I had reached that point yet. I decided to keep going, hoping to find a marker soon. As I walked, the forest seemed to close in around me. The air felt heavier, and the usual forest sounds seemed to vanish. I noticed a faint path to my right, which wasn't on my map. I hesitated but decided to follow it, thinking it might be a shortcut. The path was overgrown and steep, but I pushed on. After about half an hour, I realized I had made a mistake. The path had disappeared completely, and I was deep in the forest with no clear way back. I tried to retrace my steps, but everything looked the same. Panic started to set in as I realized I was lost. I sat down to calm myself and think. I had enough water and a few snacks, so I wasn't in immediate danger. I decided to head downhill, thinking it would eventually lead me to a stream or road. I walked for what felt like hours, but the forest seemed endless. The sun was starting to set, and I knew I needed to find shelter before dark. I found a small clearing and decided to stay there for the night. I gathered some branches and made a small fire hoping it would keep me warm and scare off any animals. I tried to sleep, but every noise made me jump. The night was long, and I couldn't shake the feeling of being watched. At first light, I started walking again, sticking to my plan of heading downhill. After a few hours, 
I heard the faint sound of running water. Relief washed over me as I followed the sound to a small stream. I drank some water and filled my bottle, feeling a bit more hopeful. I decided to follow the stream, knowing it would eventually lead to a larger body of water or a road. The forest began to thin out, and I found a more well-trodden path along the stream. After another hour of walking, I stumbled upon a small cabin. I knocked on the door, and an old man answered. He was surprised to see me but invited me in. I explained my situation, and he offered me food and a place to rest. He had a radio and was able to contact a ranger station. By the end of the day, a ranger arrived to take me back to my car. I was exhausted but incredibly grateful. I had learned a valuable lesson about preparation and respect for nature. The experience left me shaken but also more aware of my own limits and the importance of staying on marked trails. Just before I left, the old man handed me a cup of tea and said, You know, not everyone who gets lost in these woods comes back. Some say they hear whispers calling them deeper into the forest. If you ever hear them, don't follow. His words sent a chill down my spine. I thanked him and quickly got into the ranger's vehicle, eager to leave the forest behind. As we drove away, I glanced back at the cabin. The old man was still standing there, watching us leave. For a moment, it looked like there was someone else standing in the shadows behind him. I blinked, and they were gone. The ranger didn't notice anything strange, but I couldn't shake the feeling that something was off. The image of the shadowy figure stayed with me long after I reached home, a haunting reminder of how close I might have come to never making it out of those woods. I started my hike alone early in the morning, excited to check out a new trail I'd read about. It was supposed to have beautiful views and be a bit tough, which was just what I needed to clear my head. The first few hours were perfect. The air was fresh, the birds were singing, and the path was easy to follow. As I climbed higher, the trail got steeper and narrower. I was deep in the forest now, where the trees blocked most of the sunlight. It was getting harder to see the trail markers. The path seemed less worn here, like not many people came this far. I kept going, wanting to reach the top before noon. Then I saw the trail split into two paths, which wasn't on my map. I decided to take the left path, thinking it might be a shortcut. After about thirty minutes of hiking, I realized I was wrong. The trail was hard to see, and the ground was covered in thick roots and fallen leaves. I tried to go back the way I came, but everything looked the same. I started to panic as I realized I was lost. I kept moving, hoping to find something familiar or hear the sound of a stream. The forest was strangely quiet, and my footsteps sounded really loud. After wandering for hours, I found an old, abandoned cabin. It looked like it hadn't been used in years, but it was some shelter. I decided to rest and think about what to do next. As the afternoon turned to evening, I knew I had to find a way out before it got dark. I remembered that the sun sets in the west and used that to guide me. I headed west, hoping it would lead me back to a main trail. The forest felt like it was closing in, and every sound made my heart race. Just when I thought I couldn't go any further, I heard the faint sound of running water. I followed the sound and found a small stream. I felt relieved because streams usually lead to bigger bodies of water or to people. I followed the stream downhill, my pace quickening with hope. After another hour of walking, I saw a bridge up ahead. As I approached, I recognized the familiar signs of the main trail. I couldn't believe my luck. Tired but grateful, I made my way back to the trailhead, vowing never to take unmarked paths again. When I finally got out of the forest, the sun was setting. Seeing my car in the parking lot was the best thing I'd seen all day. I took a deep breath, thankful to be safe. The experience had been terrifying, but it taught me to respect nature and always be prepared. I drove home, feeling a sense of accomplishment and a newfound respect for the wilderness. However, as I pulled into my driveway, I couldn't shake the feeling of being watched. The hairs on the back of my neck stood up. I glanced in my rearview mirror and for a split second, 
thought I saw a shadow move behind a tree. I laughed it off as my mind playing tricks on me after a long day. But later that night, as I lay in bed, I heard a faint, rhythmic tapping on my window. I froze, my heart pounding in my chest. I told myself it was just a branch in the wind. But deep down, I knew the forest wasn't done with me. The feeling of being watched never really went away, and sometimes, late at night, I still hear that tapping. I woke up early one Saturday morning, excited for my solo hike in the woods. The weather was perfect, clear skies and a light breeze. I packed my backpack with water, snacks, and a map of the trail, then set off for the mountains. The trail started out easy, winding through tall trees and green bushes. The air smelled fresh, and birds were singing above me. I felt peaceful, enjoying the quiet and the beauty of nature. As I walked deeper into the woods, the trail became harder to see. Fallen branches and rocks made it tough to follow. I checked my map regularly to make sure I was still going the right way. According to the map, I should have reached a small open area by now, but I couldn't find it. I started to worry when I noticed the sun getting lower in the sky. I hadn't planned on being out this late. Determined to find my way back, I turned around, but the trail seemed different. The trees looked unfamiliar, and I couldn't recognize any of the landmarks I'd passed earlier. Panic began to set in. I took out my phone to check for a signal, but there was none. I walked faster, hoping to find my way back to the main path, but it only seemed to lead me further into the dense forest. The once friendly woods now felt creepy and overwhelming. I came across a small stream and decided to follow it, hoping it would lead me to a bigger body of water or maybe even a road. The light was fading fast, and I knew I had to find shelter soon. I found a small, rocky overhang and decided to spend the night there. It wasn't comfortable, but it would protect me from the weather. The night was long and cold. I could hear animals moving in the darkness, and every sound made me jump. I hardly slept, too anxious about finding my way out in the morning. As soon as the first light appeared, I got up and continued following the stream. After several hours of walking, I heard a faint noise, the sound of cars. My heart leapt with hope. I quickened my pace, and soon enough, I saw the glint of metal through the trees. I emerged from the forest onto a small road. Relief washed over me as I flagged down a passing car. The driver was kind enough to take me to a nearby ranger station, where I was able to call for help. The rangers explained that the trail I had taken had been closed for maintenance, which explained why it was so overgrown and hard to follow. They assured me I was lucky to have found my way out, and gave me tips for safer hiking in the future. As I was about to leave, one of the rangers mentioned something that sent a chill down my spine. He said, It's strange though, we haven't closed that trail in years, and we don't have any maintenance scheduled there. He looked at me with a puzzled expression. We should check it out, just to be sure. Just then, another ranger walked in. His face went pale when he saw me. Are you saying you were on the old north trail? He asked. I nodded, confused. He looked at the others and said, That trail was shut down after those disappearances a few years ago. They never found the hikers. My blood ran cold. As I walked back to my car, I couldn't shake off the feeling that I wasn't alone in those woods. Something or someone had changed the path, leading me deeper into the forest. And as I drove away, I couldn't help but glance back at the trees, wondering if they were hiding secrets I was never meant to uncover. Last summer, I decided to go camping alone in the thick woods near my hometown. I wanted to get away from the busy city and find some quiet. I packed my tent, a sleeping bag, some food, and my flashlight. I also brought a small first aid kit, just in case. The walk to the campsite was beautiful. Tall trees shaded the path, and the sound of birds singing filled the air. After a few hours, I found a perfect spot near a small, clear stream. 
I set up my tent and gathered some firewood for the night. As evening came, I lit a small fire and cooked some dinner. The stars started to appear in the clear sky, and I felt a sense of calm wash over me. I sat by the fire, enjoying the peace and the beauty of nature. Around midnight, I decided to go to bed. I put out the fire and crawled into my tent. The forest was very quiet, but I felt safe inside my little tent. Just as I was about to fall asleep, I heard a rustling noise outside. My heart started to race, but I told myself it was probably just a small animal. The rustling continued, getting closer to my tent. I grabbed my flashlight and carefully unzipped the tent flap. The beam of light cut through the darkness, but I couldn't see anything. I stepped outside, the cool night air making me shiver. Then I saw it, a figure standing just beyond the reach of my flashlight. I froze, my mind racing. It was a person, but they weren't moving. I called out, but there was no response. Slowly, the figure began to move towards me, and I could see they were holding something in their hand. Panic surged through me, and I backed away. As the figure came closer, I realized it was a park ranger. Relief washed over me. The ranger explained that there had been reports of bear sightings in the area, and they were checking on campers to make sure everyone was safe. He advised me to be careful and suggested I move to a designated campsite a few miles away, where there were more people and better protection. I thanked the ranger and quickly packed up my things. The walk to the new campsite felt much longer in the dark, but I finally made it. There were other campers there, and seeing them made me feel better. I set up my tent again and tried to get some sleep. The rest of the night passed without any problems. In the morning, I woke up to the sound of people chatting and the smell of breakfast cooking. I joined a group of campers for breakfast and shared my story. They laughed and told me I was lucky the ranger found me before a bear did. That experience taught me the importance of being prepared and staying in designated camping areas. I was grateful the night ended safely, but as I packed up to leave, something felt off. One of the campers mentioned that there hadn't been a park ranger in that area for years. The ranger station had been abandoned after a terrible accident involving a bear attack. Chills ran down my spine as I realized the figure I saw that night couldn't have been a real park ranger. I left the campsite with a sense of unease, unable to shake the feeling that something was still watching me from the woods.